don't want it to go as high. So let's actually take our key and slide it down a little bit. I'm just going to move this off the screen a sec so I can actually see what's going on. Okay, so we do sort of get, comes down, it should affect our liquid, and it pretty much gets out of our way. And let me just look in the side window and just sort of see, yeah, it's going to be, actually, you know what, I want to actually scale this down a little more, because I don't want it to completely block our fluids. I just want to sort of have maybe like a fork-like type um, sort of action going on, so we're just breaking up our fluids a little more. All right, so now when we look at this, why is our plane, our plane for some reason just got massive, and I'm not sure what happened there, so let's just sort of fix that. Um, go into our plane here. Let's look in this side window again. Let's rescale this down. And let's go back to our side. And wow, that plane is really having some problems. Okay, bigger. Wow. Okay, that's not bad. I don't know what was going on with our plane. It kept kept resizing there. But let's just double check. So as we scroll through, our box is going to affect the fluid. As it comes down, our plane's going to cut off our flow and we should be good to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to where stuff starts to affect, which is probably about here. And let me just look at our plane again, just make sure that we're not as planes causing me some, uh, some issues here. <laughs> Okay, so let's put a let's put a position key right about here for this plane. And let's just get it out of the way. Okay, so we should be okay. Yep, a couple of little kind of small things going on in real flow that's giving me a headache, but yeah, have this. Okay, so our key comes down, our plane cuts off our fluid, and we should be good to go. All right, so we're going to continue simulating this on, and we need to get it to about here. And let's just hit simulate, and right over these frames, and we'll see what we have going here. So let me just select our fluid so we can definitely see what's going on. Oh, one thing I forgot to do. Actually, let me uh, just resize our volume demon because it did not catch our particle that ran away. So now we can continue to simulate. And maybe last thing, let me just, <laughs> sorry about this, let me just hide our bottle. Now you... <laughs> You really shouldn't pause and <laughs> restart simulations in real flow. Um, if you're working with stuff uh, like the fixed constraint or, you know, some items like that, um, some rigid bodies, they're not going to react well if you pause and reset an ambient, an, an, or a simulation. But in real flow, um, I found working with particles themselves, 
it seems to be okay. I don't really have any real problems. Pausing one, sort of looking where the liquid goes, changing some stuff around, that's, um, and then bringing it back to a point where it's not hasn't affected the particles yet, and simulate on from there. I really haven't had a problem. So um, it, it does save you some time because you can actually really look at this and say if this fluid was to go down here in the glass and just whip right out, that would be where I would want to back up and maybe add some, um, you know, some uh, maybe a drag force or I would um, change the properties of that glass, put a little friction on it so it would actually slow these particles down a little bit. But these are some of the little changes you need to have. So we're going to continue on, and I'm going to pause this, and we will come back a little later, and hopefully we'll be all set. Okay, we're back. So we actually have our simulation here, and uh, if we sort of take a look at it, our bottle picks up here, and we've got a lot of movement in the liquid here. That's what our... Uh, our nice drag force is going to sort of help us slow down so we don't jump right out of the top of the bottle. And we are still getting some nice churning in there, so that's not bad. And then as we start to pour here, uh, we do have that one escaping particle, which, you know, I wish I had some more time and sort of got them all in the glass. And now we sort of have our liquids jumping out here and sort of churning into the glass here, and that's sort of what we want, a good, good resolution of particles here. And they're sort of churning around in themselves, and we got some nice movement, which is really nice. A couple of random drops falling off. And a lot of this has to do with that little box that we moved up and down in here. And I went in and actually adjusted that and got a little more movement out of that. And then inside the bottle here, we cut off the fluids. That's with our plane to... Uh, sort of chop that back, but it's underneath where the seal is at the top, so you're actually not going to see that in the animation. And then lastly, as this bottle sets down, I was actually, the bottle gets pulled down a little fast, and what I did was I just threw, and the bottle's pretty dark, you can't barely, you can barely see the fluid, so what I did was I put a plane in here, just so when all this force comes up, it actually hits our plane, and sort of settles our liquid down because it did jump right out of the top of a bottle. So some stuff you just got to be a little creative. So let's get to the final part of this project and let's mesh this. So ideally to mesh this, we want to go to somewhere where we have sort of a good movement of liquid so we can sort of see what's going on in here. So let's sort of try and find a place. Actually, that's not bad right there. So we have a lot of different stuff going on. We have, you know, particles that are swirling around and stuff like that. So that's probably a good place to mesh. You sort of want to find something that's really interesting so you can sort of get your detail. So to add a mesh, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our mesh button here, click on that, and it's going to put a mesh in here, and it already adds our fluid since there's only one emitter in here, and there's a little plus sign to see what is underneath here. If you had multiple meshes, you could actually just right-click on this and say insert fluids or insert all fluids, and you can put your fluid into your mesh object. So first thing that we need to do is we need to set a polygon size. So let's start at 0 0.03, and to build our mesh, we just simply right-click and hit build. So let's sort of get our size going down here. Oh, that's a little big. Let's go down to 0 0.02 and rebuild this. That's better. Kind of like a little more high detailed mesh. Now this is where most people get to the point they're like, oh, well my mesh doesn't look right. It's just kind of all clumpy and really big. And if you look at the edges of the particles, you know, your mesh just ex is way past this. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to change quite a few settings in here. So first we're going to go down to um, filter method. So let's set this to yes. And I'm going to set this to a 0.4. And for tension, let's just set this to 0 0.02. And let's build that. Let's take a look at that. And as we start to add more stuff to this mesh, or 
sort of work with this mesh, it might slow down our process 